destroyer is probably the bane of the, of the rebellion in Star Wars, one of the most formidable, uh, most powerful ships in the Star Wars universe in terms of the, the true trilogy, in my opinion. <laughs> and then you also have, on the other hand, the USS Enterprise D. It's the flagship of the Federation, captained by Captain Jean-Luc Picard. And I'll start off with you. Um, what was your verdict? Well, when, when I really think about it, uh, the first point that was made by Matt is that uh, we've seen the Enterprise break up hundreds of times, and I'm like, the Enterprise has had to deal with so many different things, so many different weapons used against it, and the Star Destroyer had one laser shot at it. One. One. How bad is your defense system that you have one shot, and I'm not like, it, it wasn't calculated with anything, it wasn't uh, a very precise shot. It was like a shot in the dark, praying. And then it just goes down one tube and it blows up. Now, it has the best offense, I will say. I think you're confusing a Star Destroyer with a Death Star. Am I? Yeah. 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 Take out another note card. And this one's for me. Thank you. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. Take out another card. No, it's not a strike. It's not a strike. This goes to charity, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a card. I'm going to be cool. I'm playing this fair. And then, and then someone else, I can sit right there. I'll still be part of the panel, but they'll have to take over. I'll be gone in the next five. But I will, I will say that like the Enterprise has very great defense, and I've seen it go through a lot of stuff and still end up standing. Smoking. Terribly, but standing. Okay, as I said, I don't know much about the Enterprise, but I do know that very, very few people in the Imperial Navy are competent. And that unless <laughs> someone like Darth Vader or Grand Admiral Thrawn is actually on the Star Destroyer, I don't see there being much of a fight. I mean, maybe some problems at the beginning with all the firepower, but the heroes would eventually figure out a way in and just start kicking ass. I'm going to have to disagree with you on there. It's going to be an Imperial Star Destroyer because it is a much larger ship, far more firepower, and when they have even a rudimentary intelligent crew that isn't a stormtrooper, that they actually know how to hit things with their lasers. <laughs> and, but the problem with the s is that no matter what... I'll give an example with the movie Star Trek Generations. I don't know if you're all familiar with that one, but there was a scene where a 100-year-old decommissioned Klingon bird of prey manages to shoot the Enterprise D and destroy it. it they hit its, its, its engines, the, you know, the warp coil was about to explode yet again. And it would, in generations, the Enterprise D was destroyed by a decommissioned ship. It's, I think an Imperial Star Destroyer would have a really good chance. And with this, um, I open up to the audience. Um, if one of you would like to, to start off, to come forward with the mic over here. Yeah, go ahead. OK, um, well, with your theory, there's a problem with that. What's that? Uh, there was a decommissioned bird of prey, but uh, really, they just, that happened because they improvised Jordy's laser vision, made him walk around the ship for three hours until he went to the engine room. Saw the shield, the shield modification, modulation. It's like, oh, hey, let's just modulate it to that and fire. And well, of course, it's easy to take down a ship when you just disrupt ships. That is true. I'll give you that. It's. Um, I would counter with this though. Um, that it's the crew of the Enterprise D, the flagship of the Federation. I would figure that either Jordy or Data would have figured it out. Just, but, just to add to that, it's like, I, I, love, I love Next Gen, but 80% of the plot devices are stuff that goes wrong with the Enterprise. Like, what does, that, what does the maintenance record look like? Do they have, like, separate rooms on the ship? It's like, oh, you know, five years ago, this went wrong. We nearly had the core exploding. Eh, but, you know, that's, that could be something to add to the debate. Like, could maintenance be part of the, the weaknesses to the Enterprise, that it constantly needs to be fixed. You are right, though. The Enterprise D was destroyed by Lursan and Beethoven. Lursan and Be 
Dator, I bet I'm, I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, um, uh, Duras's two sisters. Um, they did manipulate Jordi in order to, it wasn't a fair fight. Yeah. Only half the sisters survived. That is true. So, the, yeah. other half, the other half survived. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, is, this is designed to break apart. Yeah. Anyone else want to come forward? Yeah. And it's okay. I'll have the mic too. <laughs> Star Destroyer fire, fires lasers. Lasers will not penetrate the shields of the Enterprise. All they have to do is beam a oh, torpedo anywhere on that ship. Beam it to the damn bridge. <laughs> no more Star Destroyers. I've seen that. I've seen exactly. That sure. Exactly. Funny. That holds true in this instance because they have what deflector arrays, yeah. no true shields. If I'm <laughs> correct, not a huge Star Wars fan. But. That's my point. It's good. It's a good point. Anyone? Anyone else? All right, I will make my presentation on this. Um, so, on a scale, the Star Destroyer is bigger than the Enterprise, right? Oh, yes. So that, then, well, logically, then that would mean that there's going to be a small amount of people needed to operate the Enterprise and the Star Destroyer. So if I were to be able to pick in which should I be in charge of, the Enterprise or the Destroyer, I would think that the Enterprise would be a much better choice because would I rather be a teacher of a classroom of 50 to 100 or a class of 1,000 to 2,000 people? There's going to be more communication between a smaller group of people than a much wider group because things can easily go already. Like you give a simple battle order command to shoot, shoot, the, shoot the bad guys who are trying to get away and then Possibly by the time it gets to the 1,000 person who's going to shoot, try to shoot them down, they're going to try to shoot down a meteorite instead. Right. So, so, so you're saying like crew size doesn't does affect the communication of the entire ship is what yes. you're saying. That does. That, that's a good point. Yeah. All right. So we got one more. Yep. All right. Come on up. So um, about the size difference of these, the uh, Imperial Star Destroyer also has fighter complements. A lot of them. That's true. Um, now, I think you can compare this as a guy in a scuba suit with some C4 trying to destroy, I don't know, a U boat or something. Probably even bigger. Not quite going to work out too well. It could happen. He could sneak up on that boat, set it off, and get out. It's like you, you thaw out a cryogenically frozen solid snake and then yeah. send him in a pod. It could happen. <laughs> They could take each other out, but most likely one of those turbo lasers that can screw way bigger ships. Once that hits, that thing's disintegrated. I don't care if it has deflector shields. Kinetic force is still kinetic force. Yeah, yeah. I still like that image. <laughs> and I want to bring up the whole thing about kinetic force, like you just said. I seem to remember in episode 6 of Star Wars, an A-Wing crashing into the bridge of not just a Star Destroyer, but a Super Star Destroyer. And then the whole thing comes crashing down in two minutes. So if they can, if they can just hit that bridge, which is probably just as poorly defended, then they pretty much win, because apparently they have no backup systems in place. It's, yeah, it, that is true. It's, it seems like the, certain, the Imperial Star Destroyers don't have any real shields. Uh, however, there was one episode of the Star Trek The Next Generation where a bunch of Ferengi managed to take over the entire ship that was full of its crew. And they're Ferengi. They're, they're like that tall. And, you know, and they're bigger, and they're not very good yeah, at and communicating and strike teams. Entire ship. How drunk was the crew? <laughs> I will admit. Captain Maybe they weren't drunk enough. Yeah. I mean, I can admit, Captain Picard was a kid during that episode. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. Um, but the fact still came about, it's, you know, if you take Captain Picard out of the picture, the Enterprise is kind of you know, screwed. But Imperial Star Destroyer, um, they can still win without Vader. And then you got Vader in there, too. But have we ever actually seen them win without Vader? Or, for that matter, have we ever actually seen them win with Vader? <laughs> oh! That 
was a low blow, but I will. <laughs> I will see that one, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Okay, so it's rather well established in the Star Wars lore that Star Wars ships deal with a lot of electromagnetic pulse and similar issues, and so if it have to, in order to communicate from ship to ship, simple hailing frequencies have much, much more powerful hailing frequencies and, and a massive scale, simply to overcome the basic shielding that they need for ion weapons. They don't have this in Star Trek. So one of the best scenarios I've seen play out of this is Star Trek does a normal hailing. Well, that doesn't breach the shields because it's not nearly high enough, you know, what, whatever you want to call it. The Star Destroyer then decides, oh, where are we? We're going to send out a basic beacon to find, you know, if there's any post where we've come through in this imaginary wormhole that's gotten us into an alternate dimension. This basic low frequency pulse that they send out is strong enough that it completely fries all the transistors or whatever weird technology they use in Star Wars, making it so that no point on the bridge or other place in the ship is able to communicate within itself. <laughs> and with the, oh, go ahead. One last one, and then we'll. Yeah. 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 Well, wow, us. One last it's one. It's simple. Even if the Star Destroyer is losing, it just sends all its fighters and crash into the difference. So. Sounds good. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just gonna send all. That's a good. Hmm. Use that at uh, you know projectile missiles. Shall we open yeah. it up to everybody for the vote? Oh um, no, nope. it's. Oh, uh, yeah, Matt. Uh, go ahead. What's your verdict? Star Destroyer. I know I'm going to say the wrong one, and John's going to be right out there. <laughs> He's going to hate me. But you know what? Despite that, I'm, st I'm still going to go with Enterprise. See, I'm going to go with the USS Enterprise D because All right. um, there's one good reason an Enterprise D can go through the asteroid belt of the solar system. You know, in Empire, Star Destroyers are being destroyed because they're going through an asteroid belt. <laughs> 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 so, don't forget, two of them collided against each other. Yeah. yeah. Well, well good.